That's the general idea behind MDP. It's a fast and effective method for processing magnetic resins. You can use it to purify nucleotides, protein complexes, vesicles, or even whole cells. For this demo, let's pretend we have cells growing in a well plate that excrete protein complexes directly into the media. Depending on your experimental design, different volumes of magnetic resin can be used. But for the lower bound, you probably wouldn't want to go below a few microliters due to the difficulty of just seeing the resin. And for the upper bound, depending on the resin, I've tested less than one mil of resin before the magnetic trap becomes saturated. You can always add more magnetic traps in series if you need to do larger purifications. Depending on your experimental design, it may be necessary to remove the bulk of the biological suspension before transferring the bound resin to a washing buffer. You could use the provided cone magnet with a conical tube and allow the resin to pellet a few minutes prior to washing, or use the magnetic trap the same way that is used to recover the resin from the washing buffer. In this scenario, the volume of the biological suspension is negligible and is transferred directly to the washing buffer. When setting up the apparatus, I start from the bottom and thread the tubing in a counterclockwise fashion following the slope geometry of each clip, making sure the tubing is secured by slightly rolling the tubing into the clip before continuing to the next zone. Each zone is defined by discrete laser etched lines that produce 1.2 tesla of magnetic flux density. After threading the tubing, I make any adjustments to the tubing or clips to make sure a majority of the tubing is overlapping with the laser etched marks. There are a few ways to process the magnetic resin that I've thought of. Like with everything else, it depends on the experimental design. This setup is with a peristaltic pump with separate influent and effluent. You could also set up an experiment using a single reservoir that continually cycles the biological suspension. It might be faster to use a reusable glass syringe for processing. An advantage of using a syringe is that it makes it straightforward to swap syringes with different experimental conditions. An example would be the removal of buffer components like glycerol, which interfere with cryo-EM sample preparation. With the magnetic resin trapped in the tubing, we now need to reduce the volume of the tubing to a desired elution volume, commonly in the microliter range. Using 3D printed stoppers, we can cap both ends of the tubing and unwind the tubing from the apparatus. This is a close-up of the trapped resin in the high-intensity magnetic field zones. I typically twirl the tubing for a few seconds to resuspend the resin within the tubing before purging the tubing in the next step. Here I am assembling the cone magnet and the associated 3D printed components for condensing the magnetic resin. This is to highlight that this is a modular platform that can be customized. I plan to continue to create components for this platform that can be 3D printed at your convenience. If you have ideas that you would like implemented, let me know. I take about 10 milliliters of extra washing buffer to perch the tubing into a conical tube resting above the cone magnet. If a large amount of resin is used, you may need to cycle the purge once or twice to remove all the resin in the tubing. For the sake of demonstrating these high intensity magnetic fields, I've used an exaggerated amount of magnetic resin to display the effect of the cone magnet. After about 10 seconds, the excess washing buffer can be removed and the pelleted resin is either ready for elution directly in the conical tube or can be transferred to a smaller vessel. If the volume in the conical tube is greater than about 20 milliliters, additional time is required to completely pellet the magnetic resin. I then swivel the conical tube away from the high intensity magnetic field so I can resuspend the resin and transfer it to a smaller vessel. If you want the full advantages of this apparatus, use a ferromagnetic resin larger than 30 microns. With an optimal setup, considering resin type, size, and amount, it can become an expedited protocol where you only need to use one zone. 
This lends itself to cutting the tubing directly to access the resin for high experimental throughput. If you need a recommendation, I use this anti-flag tag magnetic resin with great results. Dynabeads are an outlier compared to the other magnetic resins I've tried. It's the smallest one by far and utilizes super pair magnetism. For one of those reasons, I wouldn't recommend it. You could run two magnetic traps in series to improve the effectiveness, but I would suggest buying a resin suitable for MTP. I do have some footage of working with Dynabeads, so it can work if you absolutely have to use Dynabeads. You can see the magnetic suspension go from a yellow solution to a clear solution, but the flow rate was impractical. I encourage all life science researchers to add CryoEM to their tool belt as this technology has matured and become very user friendly over the last decade. Having validated structures to guide our hypotheses and to connect molecular details to emergent phenomena should be a very high priority. And since the NIH has initiatives supporting researchers to get their samples imaged, you should take advantage. If you would like more information, here is a link where you can read more about it. Here is a nice paper that goes through the entire cryoEM workflow. There are lots of good ideas in here. Especially useful are the reagents for making your own washing buffer, so you don't have to buy any proprietary buffers. This gives you a lot of flexibility to find the right conditions for your sample. I've used a recombinant flag tag and found it to be highly effective for purifications. I calculated a cost of about $1 to $2 for 10 microliters of sample, depending on whether you buy your reagents in bulk. This could be enough for a cryo-EM dataset if you had a really good sample.